hope you guys got a chance to see that video the other day. <laughs> Rachel posted of these little girls snoring. It's hilarious. They were just doing it like five minutes ago when I was out here. I had to run up back up to the house to grab something. I came back and they're a little quieter now, but these girls are only going to be with us for about two more weeks now. We have to take them to the processor in 14 days from today, which means it's time to start getting them prepared for transport. Now we don't have a um, like a big proper horse trailer or livestock trailer that we can use to transport our pigs. So we have a small little five by seven utility trailer that we use, but in order to use that, we have to start getting them used to the trailer quite early. So today I got the four wheeler out. We're gonna get the trailer hooked up. We'll run up to the garage. We'll get a few more pieces and parts that we're gonna need. And then we'll go through getting a trailer set up for them so they can start getting used to it. And I will explain to you some of the lessons learned I, I, I learned from the first time we did this because there's some things that you need to do to make it so that it goes well. So let's get started. I'll explain that stuff as we go and as we get things set up. And we'll let these girls just take their little nap. I have no idea how much these things are gonna weigh. For the longest time, it was big pig and little pig, and now it's getting hard to tell which one's which, especially when they're laying down. So this is our trailer that we use for our pigs. It's a five by eight galvanized steel. Sure track is the name of the brand trailer. Got a lift gate in the back, and you can see here in the back part, this is our transport shelter that we use. Now we originally designed this whole thing and built it for our goats two years ago, two and a half years ago maybe. Goats really weren't a fan. Um, so now we mostly use it for our pigs. We'll keep it in our pig paddock for them to go in in the summer months when it's really hot. And then when it's time to transport our pigs, we put it in our trailer, fits perfectly in here we lower the ramp, the pigs can walk up in. We close the ramp, hook it up to the truck, take them to the processor. So let's see if I can get this up here. Yep, there we go. So we're gonna run up to the garage. There's a couple extra small little parts I need, and then we'll come back. We'll bring this into the pig pasture. We'll get it all set up, and I'll share with you guys kind of what I learned about this process. a couple jack stands. And I always keep all my scrap pieces of wood from different projects I make. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think this will be good. I already got one other one in the trailer, so this should be all we need. I can't turn sharp enough with the plow on the front. First 
lesson that we learned. While it's not muddy today, and it's not even all that cold, it's about 34 degrees out today, you never know a couple of weeks from now what things are gonna be like. The very first time we tried to get our trailer out of here, it had been wet, wet, wet. Everything turned to mud. The trailer tire sunk into the mud and then it got cold. So it was really hard to get the trailer out at first. So I'm gonna pull it up on a couple pieces of two by eight, just scrap wood that I have laying around. We'll get the wheels up onto this and then we'll get on to the next part. Pig snoring all the way over here. Somebody's made a comment about how they sound like they have sleep apnea. Crack me up. Might explain why they sleep about 16 hours a day. That's all they do. They, they like literally sleep. They wake up to eat, poop, and drink water, and that's it. So the next part may not be oops, applicable to everyone. Um, it is applicable to us because our trailer is so light. Um, if a pig was to walk up this ramp right now, when they got to about right here, the front end of the trailer is so light, it's gonna tip up, scare the crap out of the pig, and then they're probably never gonna go in your trailer again. So, we put some jack stands here in the back just to keep the back end from being able to come down. The front end, we're not changing. The front's still light. We're not fixing that problem. We're putting jack stands under the back so the trailer can't tip up on them. And we're gonna do the same thing we did with the wheels and put a couple blocks of wood under it because these jack stands basically have like there's really no footprint to them. They're just going to sink right in the mud. There we go. There's a little bit of gap. It's not touching just yet. But I'm going to jack up the front of the trailer a little bit higher. So it's kind of resting on, almost resting on the jack stands, the tires, and the front post kind of all somewhat equally. So I've looked around a few times to try to find a pretty cheap, affordable, like livestock trailer. And it's kind of like a weird situation because we only, we really would only use it like once every two years at this point for taking our pigs to the processor. So it's not really worth the cost justification in my opinion. And they're either cheap and junk or nice and way too expensive. So the taller, higher, higher, higher I raise this jack, the less stable the whole thing is gonna be. So I'm gonna put some bigger pieces of wood up under here. Oh, maybe. No! <laughs> They rolled right off my pieces of wood. All right then. We need to get the four wheeler back in here. Guess you can put that on the list of lessons learned. I'm just raise the front a little higher. Nice and stable. The front end's not going to come up on me. We'll end up putting maybe a third or a half of a bale of hay in here for him just to make it more comfortable. 
But one of the other things we learned along the way is that although this like metal ramp has all these little holes in it and these little reverse little dimple things, they will not walk up this. When they can see through something and see the ground down below, pigs won't walk on it. So what we found as a solution to this is you could use an old piece of carpet, a piece of old piece of carpet would work good. Especially if it's like something nice and fuzzy, it'll give their little hooves something to get traction on. But what we use is a stall mat, which is just a half inch, three quarter inch thick piece of rubber that you normally put inside of a stall for livestock to stand on to just to take some pressure off their hooves. The part about that that kind of sucks is really heavy. <laughs> so we're gonna go around to the front where the stall mat is try to drag it around over here and up onto this. Good to go. Two weeks is what we have left for the pigs to get them from our house to the processor. So this is how the next two weeks is kind of gonna go. We'll start with day one feeding them in the morning. Here, day two, day three, four, five, six, day seven. Hopefully by day seven, we get them all the way up in there. Day eight, you want food, you gotta go in there and get it. So that leaves us nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, like, five or six more days to feed them totally inside there. If they want food, they're gonna have to walk up this ramp, go inside there, it's nice, shaded from the weather. If it's raining, they can still go in there, stay dry. Processing day, we'll do the exact same routine. Put their food in there, they'll walk up. We take this stall mat, we rip it out really quick. We fold up the gate, we'll go get the tractor, because with with two pigs in there, I don't think I can pull this trailer with my four-wheeler. I think it might be too much weight. So we'll get the tractor, we'll hook that up to the trailer. We'll go around, we'll hook it back up to the back of my pickup, and then we'll head off and head west. We are heading out this year to a different processor for our pigs. Uh, the first year we raised pigs, we took them to a processor in Milan, Michigan, Dunbar Meats, I believe they were called. They didn't have any spots available this year. So we're taking them all the way out near like Irish Hills area of Michigan, near uh, Jerome to Jerome Country Market, which happens to be our friend, uh, Mike and Jenny Pratt from the Pratt Family Homestead. They're the people that put together the uh, Michigan Homestead Hoot Nanny every year. They live right out there like five minutes from there, I think. 10 minutes, something like that. I'm not really sure exactly, but I know they live right by there because that's the processor they use. So that should be getting pretty close to wrapping up pigs for the year. I think our next, our uh, next pig video that we'll probably do will be about two weeks from today when we get them loaded up and taken off to the processor. And then another week, two weeks after that, we'll show you guys what we got back from the processor and how much meat we got this time. You wake up from your nap, having some lunch now, huh? So thanks a lot for coming along, guys. Kind of a short video today, I had some chores to do. Might as well take you guys along with me, especially when I have some things that we've learned over the years that I can share with you guys. I always like sharing that stuff with you guys. If you don't have a full The other pigs checking out the trailer. You don't have a full-size livestock trailer, horse trailer. You can still transport pigs to the processor just fine in a small trailer. Give them some shelter so the wind doesn't blast them on the way there. Keep them calm. Make them feel safe. Get them used to it over time, like, like at least two weeks. Um, and it'll go smooth for you. I cannot give you any tips on how to get them out of the trailer. <laughs> once you get them to the processor. If you didn't catch our last video on that, I'll link it here at the end. You can check that out. It took us about 30, 
40 minutes to get them out of the trailer once we got there. I don't know what we're going to do different this year. <laughs> we'll see when we get there.